Hi everyone, we're here to discuss the latest EPIC Oxford study uh, that was published uh, uh, last week. And it's a very interesting study. It looked at the risk of ischemic heart disease and stroke in uh, a very interesting population that divided them into three dietary groups, meat eaters, fish eaters, and vegetarians. And we're here to talk to you about it because the results showed that vegetarians had a higher risk of total stroke, especially hemorrhagic stroke. And we wanted to go into the details and show you the nuances of the paper because it's interesting. Yeah, and we're a bit of a statistics wonk, so we wanted to make sure that we get the details. This is a very controversial statement they're making. Now, as opposed to the last week's uh, paper, we talked about the choline, which was an opinion paper. That was easy to debunk. This one's actually a legitimate database. It's right. a good database that has uh, published multiple publications, uh, valid publications. But this one was a little unusual, especially in light of the fact that all the risk factors have previously been shown to be lower. Risk factors for stroke of all types, lower in plant-based population. So hang in there, be patient. This is going to be fun yeah. because it's a different way of looking at the data and, and kind of parsing out. Now, I wanna make sure that you understand, we're, we try to be unbiased, we're scientists, so we're not just picking on anything that picks on vegetarian or, or plant-based diet, but when the data is making such huge claims, which then is taken up by the media and, and outlandish statements such as, you know, a stroke is significantly increased in vegetarian population, we have to look at it in a little more detail. Absolutely. So let's get into the detail. Right, so the Epic Oxford study um, is based on a large population in the United Kingdom, 48,000 participants that were followed for 18 years. Um, and uh, they basically recruited them between 1993 to 2001. And they wanted to look at different disease measures and lifestyle. Um, the vegetarians were oversampled. They had a higher percentage of vegetarians in, in the population, about 33.7% of them were vegetarians. And of that, entire population, only 3.8% of them were vegan. So that's a very important point to understand because in this study, they've lumped vegans and vegetarians together. Now, um, they uh, linked the data to hospital databases and they found out how many of them had ischemic heart disease, strokes, and in strokes, how many of them had ischemic versus hemorrhagic strokes. Um, ischemic strokes nationwide, usually uh, most of the strokes are ischemic. 85% of all strokes are ischemic, only about 15% of them are hemorrhagic. Especially in, especially in the Western world. Especially in the Western world. So that's another important point to remember. Now, um, of all of this population, they found out that there was a total of 1,072 strokes. So that was a total number of strokes that they found out but they only were able to categorize 819 of them uh, into ischemic and hemorrhagic categories. So that basically means that about 24% of all strokes were not categorized. They were not classified properly. And in research, that's a very important point because that could essentially mean that there must have been some other brain disease that didn't really get categorized, or maybe they lumped a lot of ischemic into hemorrhagic, hemorrhagic into ischemic, and that throws off a lot of numbers. And when we come back to the final conclusions they're making, which is such small differences, then this 24% becomes significant. Agreed, agreed. So, you know, when you look at 819 total classified stroke, we're going to leave out the 24% alone. 519 of them were ischemic and 300 of them were hemorrhagic. This is total, which basically means that about you know, 60, um, you know, 63% of them were ischemic and about 36% of them hemorrhagic. There in itself, that's not really what the, you know, global statistics and the nationwide statistics have shown for stroke. So that, then again, that speaks to misclassification potentially. Now you have two things that are not right. If your population you're studying is not diagnosed well, mm -hmm. then that actually throws, on, throws out your final statistics. And at the same time, if your stroke proportion or your disease proportions at baseline are not representative of the population, then something is wrong. There is a misclassification at two levels now right. that can throw everything off. Exactly. And so now when you look at these strokes stratified for meat eaters, uh, fish eaters, vegetarians, and vegans, the numbers are incredible. I'll just tell you the numbers for the meat eaters uh, as a comparison. So there were 513 total strokes in meat eaters. 
Um, there were about, um, you know, 66% of them were ischemic, 33% of them were hemorrhagic. And as far as vegetarians are concerned, they had about 179 strokes and 55% of them were ischemic and 45% of them were hemorrhagic. I mean, that, that disparity just doesn't really make any sense. And, and especially the meat eaters. I mean, if you think that maybe the numbers are different in the vegetarians because of that fact that there's more hemorrhagic strokes in vegetarians because of some intrinsic factor in the diet, then why would the meat eaters also be different from general population? Right. I mean, what is going on there? There's actually a selection problem here in the, in, in the diagnosis and in this population. Misclassification. Misclassification. And in, uh, among vegans, there were a total of 27 strokes. So among the vegan population, 27 of them had strokes, 19 of them had ischemic strokes, and guess what? There were only eight hemorrhagic strokes. Now, now when you're talking about nine, uh, 27 strokes and eight hemorrhagic strokes in vegans, yeah. there's a power problem. When a statistics doesn't have enough numbers in them, that me it means that any chance event can throw that number off. If your total number of uh, hemorrhagic strokes are eight, by chance you can have plus or minus uh, one way or the other. Agreed. And when you're when you have twenty four percent that are misqualified, mis misclassified, yeah. forget about chance. Majority of that difference could be in, buried in that misclassification. I also want to point out the difference between vegetarians and vegans. Eighty one vegetarians had hemorrhagic strokes versus eight vegans had Correct. hemorrhagic strokes. And just to lump them together to represent a disease is, is, is not right. It dilutes the final numbers. Agreed. So, you know, there lies an issue. The, the, the second thing is when you look at other papers that have been published uh, from this database since 2000, uh, vegetarians had lower risk of developing high blood pressure. They had lower risk of developing diabetes. They had better cholesterol numbers. So all of the risk factors for stroke, whether ischemic or hemorrhagic, have always been better for vegetarians. And so, you know, just looking at disease outcomes minus the risk factors, again, I don't, I think there might be some statistical flaws because of the small number of vegetarians and vegans in this population. Now, we want to make sure that you understand that we don't, we're not saying that this whole thing is wrong. We should uh, evaluate this uh, and, uh, and the beauty of science is mm -hmm. it has to be reproduced by others. Uh, and there are some things that we are ourselves are a little worried about uh, when it comes to low LDL levels and hemorrhagic risk. Right. There are several studies that show that when the LDL levels get too low, there might be increased risk of hemorrhagic stroke. But even there, there has to be further studies done. Agreed. But in this case, yes. it's, we, we are not running into any of that. We're running into statistical error, probably dependent on the fact that the majority of this is misclassification. Exactly. Um, and, you know, the, the, the dietary patterns have been discussed previously in, in some of the uh, social media posts. Garth Davis actually described it really well, too. When you look at the consumption of vegetables and fruits and the total amount of fiber, there was not really a big difference between vegetarians, uh, pescatarians, and meat eaters either. So, you know, people lived, you know, about 18 to 20 years ago. They probably weren't eating very well. A lot of them may have just been like a tea and toast kind of a diet. Correct. Where they were eating a lot of processed foods and not a lot of uh, vegetarian foods. Despite all that, when you look at the number of cases of stroke per year, it's nominal. What was the number? So there were basically three more cases of total stroke per 1,000 individual over, over 10, 10 years. years. Three more cases. And imagine if that actually was based on some misclassification bias. That in itself could explain everything. And I would say that given that 24% of the strokes are misclassified, mean unclassified, that in itself would explain plus or minus. I mean, the direction of it, we can't guess. But that, that should be stated much more boldly instead of this incredible conclusion that out of three out of a thousand and ten years that a, a, a plant-based diet, a vegetarian diet actually increases your chance of stroke. Right. So the bottom line, the number of vegans in this population was very, very small. And to um, extract such huge conclusions as to say vegans and vegetarians are at a higher risk of stroke is not true. It's not correct. I think we should all stick to a whole food, plant-based, 
unprocessed diet that has been the best diet for lower stroke risk, lower cancer risk, lower heart disease risk. And you know, the data has been repeated in multiple other populations as well. Uh, including this database, which has shown all of that. Right. So uh, with that, I hope that was helpful. It was a little, uh, you know, we have to, it's the, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and I hope that uh, we were able to explain ourselves well, but, but that was significant statistical errors or facts that we had to point out. Otherwise, the conclusions would be uh, accepted by many and we shouldn't. There's a lot more work to be done to validate anything like this. Would love to hear your thoughts and comments. Please post below. We'll see you guys later.